Hey, Home Talkers, it's Sharon here from Australia, um, and I'm coming to you live for our next DIY project. And as you can see, it's a beautiful day out here in Queensland, so I decided let's move to my backyard and we're going to do some planting. It's got to do with a little idea that you can use for Mother's Day, either your Mother's Day breakfast, lunch on the table, a beautiful little planted centerpiece and it's going to double as your Mother's Day gift. So come with me into the back courtyard and we'll get started. All right, so I'm Sharon, if you've just tuned in, and I blog over at iRestoreStuff. That's i-restorestuff.com. And um, so I'll let you know, are you right there? Oh, hey, say hello to Julie, who's actually my friend here coming to help me today. Hi. And she'll be uh, reading your questions and your comments. So please tell us where you're tuning in from. Julie's from over at Chalk and Trees and uh, she's a furniture painter too. So um, she's gonna be helping with, with some planting tips today because I'm just gonna tell you right up front, I'm not a gardener. In fact, I'm a brown thumb. See those thumbs, very brown. And so my mum's a green thumb and I just hope that she'll be really proud of me today because I tried. This is for you, mum. It's Mother's Day and um, we're going to do some planting today. So this idea, I'm just going to say, I love looking on the Facebook groups and things like that and get inspired by a lot of things that people do. So this was an inspiration from a lady um, from Kathy Hobbins over at Chicks Designs, that's C-H-I-K-S, Chicks Designs. Thank you, Kathy. If you are out there watching, give me a little wave in the comments section. Um, Kathy was doing these at her workshop and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. I wanna try that. Um, now, let's just say, if you wanna get close up here, here's my little boxes. These are little planter boxes just made with uh, pine and it says 90 mils by 12 millimeters. <laughs> and so you can figure that out in inches or wherever you're from. Um, quite roughly as you can see now don't judge me Kathy's husband Alan has done a much better job at this because he has a beautiful mitre saw where he's mitered the edges and got them all nice looking but people let's just say we're going for the rustic look today okay so don't judge my little boxes um, Julie where are people tuning in from do we have some countries or cities? We have lots of people tuning in. We've got Marsha in Kansas. Hi We've Marsha. Got Valerie in Maine. We've got Mary in Illinois and we've got Julie tuning in from Aruba. Aruba. Oh, I hope wow. it's nice and warm there. Yeah I bet it is. Nice. Well it's a beautiful day outside here and as you can tell sun's shining. Um, first project we're going to do. So I've got a few of these little boxes here and the first one I'm going to be using Fusion um, Paint and Fresco. This It's kind of like a, uh, what shall we call it, a uh, texturing medium. So I have used this before on some of my Home Talk Lives and so this is just the first project. We've got a few different styles that we're going to be ma making up and um, I'll get you to pick which one you like the best. So what I've done, I've just used my trusty salsa jars, which are all emptied of their salsa. What you wanna do is get a bit of paint. So we've just put, hmm, let's see, a couple of these scoops in there. So a few tablespoons, I think will be enough to do this box. And we're gonna create a lovely textured medium. And uh, we chuck in a couple of tablespoons of the fresco powder and we mix it and I didn't bring my mixer but I'm going to use a brush here um, you can just mix it with the brush it really doesn't matter so what we're creating and it's going to kind of look a little bit the end result is for this type of uh, project is you want it to kind of look a little bit like cottage cheese so I don't know if you can see that there um, looking a bit like cottage cheese already I think that it's a little bit uh, dry so I'm going to add just a touch more paint to that but you want the lumps so lumps are good in this case so Julie if we have any questions as we're going along just let me know interrupt me feel free and we've I will... got a few favorite plants coming through oh because you know why home talk has a giveaway every home talk DIY Live has a giveaway and we're giving away a Home Talk tote bag. So don't forget the giveaway question is, what is your favorite plant? 
So I'll be planting some here today in Australia. I don't know if they're going to be the same as all over the world plants, but anyway. What are people's favorite plants, Julie? Just while you, before you do that, I'm just gonna show you. We're just dragging and wiping on this textured medium on the box. So while Julie's telling me your favorite plants, that's what I'm doing. Well, lots of people have said that their favourite plants are hydrangeas. Really? I love hydrangeas too. You do? They're beautiful. You're a bit of a garden person, aren't you, Julie? Uh, not really. My husband is. I'm my trusting husband. you to help me here, girl. No, no, so no. I have learned about gardens through osmosis because my husband is an ar arborist. Oh, so is he? There he's you go. a tree guy. So, oh, so he would tell you all those tree things. He does. And I do love anything that has flowers on it pretty yep. much. Yes. Um, but I did like a comment from BK Chambers who said that their favourite flower is blue hydrangeas because they're big and blousy. Big and blousy. Mm, well, that's never... a good uh, description of a flower. It is. Interesting. And Mary, uh, sorry, Cindy uh, likes night jasmine. I do too. Oh, yeah. They smell I so nice. I would imagine that would have a beautiful smell. Yeah. Um, so Alida, her favourite flower is hibiscus, which is beautifully oh, tropical. Yeah, very tropical. We have lots of hibiscus here. Um, and we've got Shauna. Shauna said that her favourite flowers are bachelor buttons. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. No, I haven't heard of those either. These are what some we're going to have to Google later and have a look at and yeah. drool over and see if we can get them in now. Neck of the woods. Yep, and ginger loves succulents. Awesome. Yep, oh. I think succulents are a big um, thing at the moment, aren't they? And you know what? I actually tried to find some succulents for my little project here that we're doing right now. And uh, the only ones I, could, I couldn't find mini ones. I wanted to find little mini ones to go in my boxes. But our where I looked anyway, they were all too big and way too expensive. So in my neighborhood, that's an expensive plant to buy succulents. So I uh, opted for some other ones, which I'll show you in a minute that we're going to be working on. So if you can get in a little close here, my wonderful video man husband, I'm <laughs> going to show you the actual texture on these boxes is looking pretty good. And you can see this is actually just going to be the base coat. Okay, so the color I'm using is called Homestead Blue. And so it's a, a deep Blue, vintage kind of a blue really. Doing the tops here, the other thing, don't forget, you're going to probably see a little bit of the inside of your box when we do it. So I just like to color that a little bit just to make sure we don't see that blonde wood showing through. Whoops, I'm putting that down on my drop cloth there. So how's everyone going? Yeah. Um, any questions there about what I'm doing? There were some questions about getting a close-up, but I can see we're doing that so that they can see the texture from the fresco. You, are, you, are we close? Yeah, now? we're close. Okay, cool. We are close. I can't see what's happening. All right, so we've got in just a little bit of the inside, most of the edges, and I'm going to leave this part to dry, so that'll take you know a little while to get all those lumps dried, but as you can see, great texture there. And this is just, like I said, it's the bottom coat and we are going to, and I could have, I could have actually painted the base here, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's going on a table. We've got plants in the top. You're not going to flip it up to see underneath. Kim and so, Bonnie wanted to know what you're putting in the paint, Sharon. So the um, medium I'm using is Fresco and uh, that's a fusion mineral paint product. There are other products too on the market just similar to it. So it gives you that weathered, sea swept kind of a look. Um, and you'll see what we do in the second part of this project when we get to that. So I'm going to set this one aside for right now and wipe my hands everywhere. That's going to set aside to dry because in our second step, here's one I've prepared earlier. Ta-da! And you'll see that the fresco has dried, but it's dried a little bit lighter in these areas where it's higher ratio of powder. So that's that lighter color. And that sometimes will happen with the darker colors. So you can see the lovely texture here. This is the one I've just painted with the fresco and paint. And now we're getting on to, let me just put this in the water. 
and what I'm going to do is get you, Julie, to run up and get me a white paint because I've forgotten a white paint. Sure. And what I'm going to do is leave that one aside because we have some more boxes and the other box, one of the other boxes, I'm going to distress this wood and we're going to stain it. So to distress wood, if you've never done that before, grab yourself some tools, uh, you know, serrated knife, that's good. We're going to just kind of dodgy up the sides of the thing and your hammer can get some dings in there just like it's been used for over the years. You know when you're distressing, I don't know about you, but it's sometimes hard to, um, it's hard to make it look like it's not man-made. You know the dints and dings and things, so um, we're just going to give it a go, scratch it up a bit, some of the edges. Thank you so much, trusty assistant, just the colour I was looking for. So that's going to go with this one in just a second, but we'll finish off this little bit of wood here. And even some little holes are great for pretending they're little wormholes or something like that. And so then we're going to, then we're going to just do a bit of staining. I might just. Bonnie has suggested to use a heavy chain. Oh, absolutely. Bonnie, great idea. If I had a heavy chain right now, I would so do that. But yeah, that's a great idea. So just a few little knocks and dings. And you'll see what happens when we actually add some stain. So with my stain, what I have used is just a little bit of brown paint mixed with water. Easy. Easy as. So I'm using a brush that doesn't really matter. Whoops. Um, oop. And so that way it's all kind of water-based. Actually, I am going to change the brush because I don't want to use that one. I'll use this one. Okay, so I've just mixed some paint with water to make a stain. And we're just going to go over the top right that. And I've probably got a little bit too much water in my ratio of paint here because this stain is going to be quite light. But then I'll show you how you can darken it up if your stain isn't. But look at those dings and scratches, how they're now showing through in that stained area. So if you've just tuned in, we're making some little table centerpiece ideas for mum for Mother's Day. I've already pre-dinged these sides as well. And we're going to have three different ideas that you could do with your either a little planter box that you've made like these ones, my inspiration from Kathy Hobbins and her husband's wonderful work. Um, and they're really quite easy to make. I just kind of glued them together. The link's in the blog post over on Home Talk, um, I, how I kind of just measured, stitched them together. Oh, don't forget to stain just on the inside again. Is there any questions there, Julie? Uh, not so many questions at the moment. Yeah. People commenting that it's a beautiful stain. Hi, yeah. Leslie in New York. Hi, Leslie in New York. I wonder what the weather's like over there. What's the weather like where you are in your city? Let me know. It's a beautiful day here in Queensland. That's all I'm telling you. So beautiful outside and it's so nice. And it's been a little bit cooler because we are moving into winter, unlike you guys in the Northern Hemisphere. But there we go. There's the stain. I'll just let that dry, pop it over here. And let's go back to our fresco uh, box. And what I'm going to do with the white paint is go over the top in areas just really roughly. Sorry. Rachel loves Better. Aussie accents. Oh thanks Rachel. Should we do <laughs> our best home and away? Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't do home and away. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Brush. That's funny. Ooh, we all spring like accents in Utah. That, we're sorry? Spring. It's spring in Utah. I hope it's a beautiful spring day. So what I'm going to do is I'm not really dry brushing, but I'm just wiping off most of the paint off my brush. And you can start with a little bit and add more. So I, you can see there we've got the weathered thing happening, but watch what happens as I drag the brush over that. I'm dragging it over the fresco and you can see the gorgeous texture showing through right there. And you can add more in some bits or less, but see how we've got a lovely weathered look. Now, if you want to, 
you think, well, that's not enough, I think I'd like a bit more, you just add on a little bit more. 84 degrees in Sugarland, Texas. Whoa, 84 degrees, that'd be Fahrenheit, because if that was in Celsius, we'd be... Cooking. Cooking. It'd be like the oven, literally. <laughs> that sounds, I think that sounds like a nice day. It's really hard to get my head to try and figure out what uh, Fahrenheit is in Celsius. Yeah, me um, too. So look at that, isn't that looking great? And you can see that texture showing through on our white piece. Oh, raining in Branson. Raining in Branson. Sorry, Branson people. Oh. Although sometimes you never know, people might really need the rain. Of course, the farmers need it, so we never complain. Bonnie likes to dry brush to give the weathered look. Yes, I do too. And as you can see, the, dr the brush is kind of fairly dry now, so let's have a little look. That was Bonnie, was it? Yes. Yeah. So dry brushing here for this weathered look. And watch how it just sits on those really high places there. So you could go as little as that for your dry brush look, or you can keep going with this. And then afterwards when this dries, we've got a little technique where you can sand back and actually see those blue pieces poke through even more. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more for my particular one. You can do yours as little or as much as you would like. Sabina's tuning in from Bali. Hi Sabina. Oh, I bet the weather's nice in Bali. And, um Karen wants to know where we are. We're in Queensland, mm -hmm. Australia, in uh, just south of Brisbane in the Logan City. And it's a gorgeous day here. Sylvia loves carnations, so do I. Oh, that's your favorite flower. Don't forget, you know, Home Talk competition here on the live. If to, you want to win a Home Talk tote bag, answer the giveaway question at the top of the post that's pinned there. And it is, what is your favorite plant? Could be a flowering plant. It could be whatever. Someone said succulents before, didn't they? Yes. We've got a few more favorite plants coming in. Yes, we do. Uh, just though, Kathy Schroeder has yep. very helpfully let us know that 29 degrees is 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, okay. So nice that's quite a hot day. Mm. It is fairly hot day. That. Thank you for letting us know that. We need our little temperature interpreters today. So there we go. We have uh, almost finished because it's got to dry and then I'm going to do a little bit of sanding. And I'm going to move on to our, back to our stained wood piece here because that's pretty much dried. And as you can tell, it's fairly light, but you can still see those dinged up pieces there. And what I'm going to do is stencil. This is going to be great. I think you'll love this. I am loving this technique at the moment for, of just using some of these rustic stencils for adding a bit of fun to your piece that makes it look like it's an old. And you're thinking, well, what is she doing with that huge stencil? Because that is so not going to fit on this little, um, what do you call it? Planter box. No, you're right. It's not. But we're <laughs> going to make it look like, and I'll start with this one here. We're going to make it look like it's an old piece of weathered wood that came off a pallet or a crate that might have had some stenciling on it. So I'm just going to put my stencil, and I didn't bring my stencil. To, oh yes, I do have my tape, but it's not really a place where I can tape it down. So I'm going to have to just work with it here. And I'm going to use a black color. Now, if you've not done stenciling before, the key is to have a really dry brush. So if you're just tuning in, we're making planted boxes for Mother's Day to double up as your Mother's Day present and a centerpiece for your Mother's Day brunch, lunch, breakfast, whatever you want to do. So I'm dipping my paintbrush to do a little stenciling on the side of this planter. And I'm going to be rubbing off most of the paint on here because we want a dry brush when we stencil. And I'm going to make it all off-centered like we've just picked up this random piece of wood off the side of the road and created a little uh, planter box. So you'll notice that I've got a really dry brush and I'm swirling. Some people like to stipple like this and some people swirl. I find that I do get a bit more uh, paint moving onto the stencil and the paper, you know, the background if I do the swirling. And as it starts to run out 
And really we're going for this rustic-y look here, so don't stress if there's little bits you've missed. My paper's moving. Okay. Add Sue Cashwell had a good suggestion for yeah. those of you with brown thumbs. Yes. She said... That's that, me. Yes. I've got a brown thumb. I'm <laughs> attempting a planter here and have no idea what I'm doing, but yes, we'll yes, go ahead. Do. What's her idea? Her idea is snapdragons. Oh, really? She said really? they're very forgiving and they come back year after year without pretty much doing anything. Oh, is that right? I we need have, some snapdragons. I yeah, I so do because I love <laughs> flowers, but I feel like that, you know, flowers... Uh, just they die on me plants die on me I seriously my if my mum's watching mum I'm really sorry but she <laughs> she takes my plants to her plant hospital I'm sorry that I can't keep them alive and they have to keep going back to mum's plant hospital and she revives them again and I swap them out with some of her nice ones I've got these beautiful maidenhair ferns in my workshop and um, we rotate them <laughs> but I'm trying really hard and they are doing okay they do come back to life all right so Here's one little bit of a stencil. Now have a look at that. It looks like it's kind of just come off an old, you know, crate or something like that. Let me do the other side and we're going to make a fun one with this that kind of looks almost like you can see the word antiques on here. So we're going for a big one. Lots Oops. of people love daisies. Yeah. And I do like, going back to the snapdragons, I've always loved them because I like the way, they're the ones that you kind of squeeze together and they look like the little talking puppets or something, aren't they? Is that the ones? I don't know if you have you not to ever, be squeezing. <laughs> I, have you not ever done that? Okay, so this is when I was a little girl, I used to get the little snapdragons that mum had in the garden and you just go like this and they just go. Doop, doop. Yeah, you, you do know? touch them and they yes. do close. That's and right. They're meant to okay. catch insects or something, oh, are aren't they? they? Okay, oh. so maybe I shouldn't be squeezing them. But anyway, it was a fun childhood thing that I used to do. Yeah, they are they are really cute little plants, though. They do look like they've got little faces. Yep. Um, <coughs> lavender and daffodils, Claire Shirley Parsons. Oh, okay. I love both of those. Yeah, I do. I love lavender. Um, does lavender need cold climate to draw, to grow in? I'm not sure. I, don't, I, I have killed so much lavender. You've killed lavender? Funny. Okay, I'm not the only one. No, who, no, no, don't feel who, bad. Who kills plants? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit better now. I don't know why, but lavender only grows in one spot in my yard. Yeah. Um, and we do, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit further out in the country and we do kind of get those frosts. Yeah. So maybe that's why my lavender it's does dying. okay in that spot. Yeah, okay. Um, well, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, Laurie Sifford, Gladioli. Oh, yeah. She's in Pennsylvania. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, so have we got any other Aussies watching today? Anyone else from Australia? Tuning Cla in. Claire is in the That's UK. Yay, UK people. Hello. And good evening. I think it's evening to you. It's morning here in Australia. And as you can see, we're stenciling a planter box. This is going to be centerpiece for Mother's Day breakfast or Mother's Day lunch or whatever, and doubles up as mum's gift for Mother's Day. So there's, oh, we've got some really cute ideas for you to choose from. We've just made this one over here with the fresco on it. And now the big reveal, here's my stencil. Let's see how that worked. So look at that, guys. Does that look cool or what? So you've Love got that. the uh, really rustic looking stencil. So even see how I've just kind of swirled and you can see darker patches here, lighter patches here. And even when that dries, we can get a little bit of sandpaper and scuff it up even more and make it look rustic. And we did this on the other side. So that's another idea. And then I'll let that dry for a bit and show you something else that we can do with that in a minute. So we've got that one, we've got this one. And we have one other idea to show you. And uh, yeah, why don't you just put a little one in the comments if you're liking this one so far. Put a little two in the comments if you're liking this one so far. And we've got another one. So you'll have room for a number three if you're liking this one. So finished with the stencil. And we haven't got to the planting yet. That's going to be fun. Julie, you're going to help me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have my garden peeps ready and commenting. <laughs> on how well I do, all right? Okay, so this piece, this is another one here. We've got this box all painted in midnight blue, gorgeous, lovely, dark, night blue color. And 
Um, we are going to tape it and as you can maybe sneak peek, we've already taped up this side. I'm going to copy what Julie did this for me, taped the beautiful uh, tape on this side. I might leave the ends plain. Julie, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. That midnight blue is so beautiful. You want to show it through. That's right. So I'm just going to be a bit random and we're going to have some geometric shapes here. You did great. This is really good. I'm trying to copy your little triangles. Whoop. Susan Trude from Taree in New South Wales. Yay. Hello, fellow Aussie. Another Aussie. Yes, wants to know where you got that stencil from. The stencil is a Funky Junks Old Sign Stencils, Donna Williams. Shout out to Donna. She makes the greatest, coolest stencils ever. And um, yes, that one's a good one. Antiques and collectibles, gorgeous. Oh, Julie um, suggested planting herbs in these. That's a yeah, great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent idea. And I, yep, I had thought of that. That's a really good point. Mm. Um, you can put it in your, then on your dining table. I mean, yeah, your kitchen table, dining table. Yes. It'd look great for a centerpiece and you've doubled as a herb garden. Mm. Or just pop it on your uh, windowsill. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I've got a little rectangle bit here. I need it to look triangular because to match up with all your special bits. Don't know how I'm doing here, Julie. <laughs> We're trying. Okay. As I said, Julie did my other side for me. Oh yeah, we can make littler ones. Let's do that. Smaller, shall we say. Okay. One more there. And I think one more here, just to make it interesting. So that's just ordinary painter's tape we've used there and we're going to make some lovely geometric shapes. So we want that midnight blue to show through in some areas and I've got a beautiful coral colour here and bronze metallic paint. I hope I brought enough paint brushes down, that's what I'm thinking. We're going to wash them out. Okay, so grabbing the coral here making this up as I go along <laughs> totally but you know this is suit that retro style and you can choose whatever colors you like um, let's do every second one maybe and going off on the edge here look at that color isn't that so vibrant that goes so well with the midnight blue Samina Calm wants to know what kind of paint you're using um, today I am using fusion mineral paint It's got really good coverage. I'm really liking the way, you know, I may have to do another coat because I'm putting the, a light color coral over the top of the dark blue. You may need another coat. Um, so we'll see how this turns out with just one. And put another one here. Oh, do you know what's good timing? What? Is Facebook has done an update for Mother's Day and you, you know how you can do the heart um, oh, yeah. emoji or the sad or the yes. laughing or whatever yes yes there's a flower one for oh, mother's day so for mother's give us day. a flower emoji so give us a flower emoji if you see that new emoji for mother's day send us a flower mo mother's Yay, day flower flowers. emoji <laughs> here they are coming through okay so i'm now um just getting the coral and dry brushing it off my brush to see if this is a better technique rather than painting it on because i'm i'm worried i'm going to get a little bit of bleed through there and I'm just going to do this swirling technique again on here. See if I can get a little bit less on the brush. Might be more. And we may just have to go over the, you know, for a second coat. So I'll leave that, pop that aside and go for our metallic colour. Open that up. <clears throat> now this is bronze and that's also a fusion colour. Jackie Phillips yes. said that flowers are showing that you're grateful. Hmm. Hmm. It's beautiful. Is that the emoji ones? Yeah. Lots oh, of flowers still coming through. I love it. This is really good. <clears throat> now, I've heard, and I think it was probably Libby Lincoln, who's a mutual friend of ours, who said that when you put 
a dark base underneath the metallics it really shines lifts, it. lifts up the metallics mm. and makes them really shine through and i'm really seeing how effective that is on these bronze areas here so we're doing some geometric shapes on this planter <coughs> eva has asked is there an australian stockist for the fresco yeah um, we do stock them here at i restore stuff you can we ship australia wide Angie Ross's favourite flower is carla lilies. Is which one? Carla lilies. Oh, I have not heard of them. Oh, have you? they are so beautiful. Really? Yeah, you um, see them in a lot of wedding bouquets because oh. they're very um, kind of glamorous looking. Yeah, yeah. Big? Are they large, kind of shaped lilies? Uh, they're not large in the same way hydrangeas are. Okay. Uh, but they're they're very stylish. I love those as well. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to just let that dry a little bit because I think I'll need to go over that coral with another uh, another coat. So we'll just pop that aside, but I'm loving how that bronze has turned out and it doesn't even matter if it has got the slightest bit of see-through on there. And I'm going back to this one here. So we've drying this one, beautiful stencil look there. If you've just tuned in, we're making planter boxes for Mother's Day. And I'm going to just finish this off with a, a bit of a darker, it's called Tough Coat Sealer and it's like I've got an antiquing tinge to it because uh, I'd, I like that to be a little bit darker. So I'll show you what I mean when I actually put this on. I'm trying to see if I've got, I think I've got just enough brushes to finish my project here. Good guess Sharon, high fives me send me a high five <laughs> sometimes it's really hard doing home talk lives and just thinking have I got everything at hand especially now that we're out here in the garden enjoying the view I've got to make sure I've got everything on hand so here we go this is uh, antiquing tough coat sealer so it it's a poly it seals it all at once so it's kind of a little bit like a stain varnish I would think um, but this will seal in your project but watch how lovely it goes on and just darkens up that stain a bit that I've put on with the water-based paint. I'll just do the top half so you can see. And it actually dries to a bit of a satin matte finish, this particular one, a matte finish. So look at that. Can you see the difference here? So I've just gone over and it's an antiquing tough coat, um, just a bit of a stain varnish. So when you, <clears throat> if you've just stained that with a water-based paint, you know, adding water, then you will probably get a bit of a lighter look. So when you go over it with some kind of varnish, it highlights and really stands out nicely. So what do you think about that, everybody? We've got the fresco happening here. We've got, I'll finish this off so you can see the full look. I think I know my favorite already. How's everyone going, winning that tote bag? We've got the winning questions, I mean, not the winning question, we've got an opportunity for you to win a Home Talk tote bag. So don't forget to answer the giveaway question and tell us your favourite plant, whatever plant that is. Well, if you're a mum, what would you like for Mother's Day? What's your favourite plant? Here's your chance to give out your hints if your kids are watching. <laughs> oh, Marion has suggested mums for mums. Very traditional. Uh, yeah, chrysanthemums. Yes. Yes. I think that's one of my mum's favourites actually, apart from roses. Lots of people, is there lots of people loving roses? I would have thought that would be a really popular there one. There is a lot of people loving roses and um, Marjorie Leatherwood has some beautiful pink roses that are in flower at the moment and they were planted by her late husband. Wow. So that's a beautiful story. And they're in story. flower at the Thank moment, you. that's gorgeous. What a, what a beautiful Mother's Day present for her yes. to have them flowering at this time. That's gorgeous. Is it Mother's Day all around the world? Because I know I, some places... I know it is in America and possibly UK. Is there any UK people who can shout out? Is it Mother's Day this weekend? I know that Father's Day is different in Australia than it is overseas. So, But Mother's Day, I have a feeling that it's kind of everywhere. So, All right, here we go, guys. I was going to give this a little rough sanding back before I varnished over it. Maybe I can show you an example of that. If I grab my 
sandpaper here now just a little bit see on these painted bits here before I glaze over it which I was going to show you before just going to give that a little sand on those letters so you can kind of see it looks a bit worn and old so now when you go over it gorgeous Angela wants to know what's the top coat called it's uh, antiquing tough coat sealer it's a tough coat wipe on poly so you can either wipe it on or brush it on today for the purpose of home talk live we are brushing it on it's a fusion mineral paint product that one oh mother's day in mexico is april 10th oh so they've just had their mother's day oh, i've got one more side to finish here so this sunday is mother's day in the usa yep same with Australia. Yes. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. That's left to dry there now. Gorgeous stain. Lovely, looking beautiful. Let's have a look at this one. So this was the first one we did. If you have just tuned in, you know, since we've started, we started out with a planter box and painted it with Fusion's Fresco Medium, which is a lovely texture, gives you a lovely sea swept look. Then we dry brushed or painted more like uh, roughly over the top of that dark blue color and um, you can still see some of that texture being hit in the high places now what i'm going to do is grab a little bit of sandpaper and just show you how you can sand that back a little bit more and get even more of that sea swept kind of rustic weathered awesome look so there you go just a little bit of sanding to hit those high points. Beth Henson likes sweet been. peas. Sweet peas, yeah, they're beautiful too. And Shirley Whitson likes sunflowers. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're such a happy There's flower. There's so many beautiful flowers in the world. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, Kerry Powell, <coughs> frangipani. Oh yeah. I love frangipani, yeah. they smell love so nice. Yeah, love and there's They're so beautiful. many different colours. Okay, so I was going to do our other side, which you've done, Julie. I think I can still do that now. Let's mm. see. So we just put on with painter's tape some uh, coral colour, gorgeous orangey colour here. And making some geometric shapes for the retro people. Some people are having issues with the video freezing. Maybe just refresh oh, your browser. Refresh your browser or something like that. Lillian Graber likes lemongrass. Oh, I absolutely love the smell of lemongrass. You know, if it comes in a soap or if it comes in, mm. you know, the body wash or anything like that. Love it. Hand creams, lemongrass. One of my faves too for the smell of it. Bonnie Gary loves a bougainvillea. I love bougainvillea, oh. but I'm not allowed to have them in the garden. Yeah. Because they've got too many thorns. They and do. They're very thorny. They are, but, but they're so the beautiful. The colour is so mm. vivid and bright. Yeah, gorgeous. Angela Warner loves stargazer lilies. Okay. See, I'm not up with all the different types of lilies. There seems to be so many different types. Carol right. Privet loves all the planters. She can't she can't choose. She can't choose. Loves them all. <laughs> if you want a chance to win the tote bag, put in your favourite in the comment section and at the end we'll be picking a winner. Home Talk ladies are busy looking through your comments trying to find a winner. So that bronze is looking awesome on there. I've left the ends plain and we're going to just go back over with this coral to just lighten that up a bit before I take off the tape. But you get the idea. Let's see where we're going with this. Susan Trude peonies. I love peonies too. They're so beautiful. Oh, I don't know that one. Don't you? No. Oh. Maybe I do if I see it. But yes. The name I'm not so familiar with. They're, they're a very romantic flower in my mind. Yes. You know, one thing that's come back into, I don't, 
I don't know if anybody has said, mentioned this one, is baby's breath. I've noticed that it's come back in a little bit in the wedding bouquets lately oh. and things like that. And we had that at our wedding 25 years ago. That's showing my age. Um, but yeah, that was one of my favourites. It's just so tiny and beautiful and makes a great filler for bouquets and things like that. So, oh. All things spring and planty today. Lots of votes for the antique stencil. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? I really like the rustic look of that one. So I'm just going to take off the tape now and do the big reveal. I'll leave that side because that one's still uh, drying. Let's go this way. So we've got that midnight blue underneath, remember? Oh, the lines are coming off nicely, Julie. I'm happy. Good. Because you don't want bleeding through underneath your tape. It's actually really good to get a good quality painter's tape, you know, so they make them nice, nicely these days. Oop, little tiny bit much paint on that one by the looks of it. It's bled through just a bit, but you get the idea and I'm liking the look of... Sandy has a goldfish plant. What is a goldfish I plant? I have no idea. I don't know that one. There's another one. Write that down. We have to Google that later. <laughs> Okay, so there's our geo geometric shapes for you to look at. So let me know so far what you think. If you like the first one we did, put a little number one in the comments. If you like the antiquing planter that we've done, put a number two in the comments. And if you like the geometric shape, if you're the retro person, put a number three in your comments. So there we've got one, two, three. And I'm going to work on number one now and just show you the finished look after I get my tissue. Lots of votes for number two. Okay, so we didn't have succulents. Like I said, in our hardware store, we had a few, but they were huge. And I just wanted little mini ones. Uh, but what I did find was these cute little tube plants. So what they've done is, uh, you know, planted little what do you call them seedlings or something like that so that obviously they're going to grow big and they will be bigger later so we'll just throw show you three for our example and I'll use my planter box number one so before we plant it we want to line it with some plastic so what I'm going to do there is grab some adhesive spray and a freezer bag and my scissors so you can use freezer paper if you like. I've, I just grabbed a freezer bag, so I'm just going to split the side of it. Because we want to line it because, you know, the soil's going to get the wood wet. Now there's people probably going to go, don't you need drainage holes? Yes, probably. But um, you this is just, that. you could, you could make some drainage holes. But since we're using this as a centerpiece for Mother's Day, on the Mother's Day, lunch table mm -hmm. we don't want it draining through and getting everywhere the other good idea is to put some rocks along the bottom then your soil then the top so anyway we'll see what happens here I'm getting my adhesive spray and I'll just spray inside kind of away from <laughs> everything's things blowing Melissa away. wants to know what plants you're using okay I'll go through those in just a second mention what plants we're using because I can't remember I just grabbed them because they looked pretty is that okay <laughs> I don't know my plants I'm really not that great with plant names well Joan has given us a good tip for painters yes. tape yes paint the box then put your tape on put a second coat of base paint all over then yes. paint your different colors painting a second coat seals the tape so there's no bleeding okay that's a really good <clears throat> That's tip. a good idea. Excellent idea. Thank you so much for that. And I'll um, let you know too, if you didn't know, if you're using adhesive spray, a great tip when you're finished using the spray, it does say this on the instructions, but nobody reads them. So just so you know, you'll notice I tipped it upside down and sprayed out there until, until nothing comes out the nozzle. And that way it won't clog up. That was free just for you today, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> I know that, and yet every time I still you forget. forget to do it. You put it down and then you yeah. don't do it. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, we're putting our plastic, which we have beautifully um, cut from a freezer bag, and I'm just going to line that right across the bottom of the planter. Oops, 
can remove it a little bit so I've just got to get my sides lined up a bit centered a bit more pushing it down there all along the bottom and all up the sides so that it sticks to the side so this is just to keep it in place obviously the um, what do you call it adhesive spray is simply to put it in its place so that it doesn't fall down when you're putting your things inside it okay so then we can remove some of that plastic that's around the outside Kathy Give it a bit of a trim. Gajewski, yes. Red Bee Balm. I'm reading out the ones that I've never heard of. Yeah, because... well thanks, because I probably haven't heard of them either. We're going to have a lot of fun just uh, looking up plants when we're finished here and dreaming of all the other fun things we could have in our gardens. But like I said, I'm really not a green thumb. Doing my best here, people, to impress my mother for Mother's Day. <laughs> Because she's good at gardening and I'm not. All right, we have cut the rest of the plastic off. Randy Soto said it would look great with different colour pots in the box. Yeah, it would actually. Different yeah. little, um, you could have the terracotta pots or whatever sticking up outside of the, the little thing. Okay, so my plants I've got here, but I want to put some I will use that idea of putting rocks in the bottom and that does allow for a little bit of drainage, right? Yes, am totally. I, is that correct, Julie? Am, yes. Am I right? I saw it somewhere on the internet. No, my mum actually taught me that. Put rocks in the bottom of your pots before you plant them. So we put some rocks in the bottom. I shouldn't really be putting my pretty ones in there because these ones are quite pretty. I like these. They're kind of like a, a, a washed sandstone pot. And then we'll get out potting mix and use my trusty scooping thing oh Sandy's let us know that a goldfish plant has two inch orange blooms that resemble a goldfish and it blooms 80% of the time wow that sounds lovely yes I love orange yeah that's that'd be a real bright pop of color to any garden wouldn't it so let me know in the comments what's your plans for Mother's Day. If you're a mum or if you have your mum um, and you're going to be doing something with her, what are you doing for Mother's Day? And by the way, a big shout out and a big love and hugs to those who have lost their mums and don't have their mums this Mother's Day because it always is a little bit of a hard time for some people who are going through that. So my thoughts with you and um, let me know what your plans are this Mother's Day. Okay, shaking around my soil there, we're on to the planting and someone asked what plants I've got. This one just says indoor plant. How am I supposed to know what it is when it just says indoor plant? That looks like plant? a fern to It me. is. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's a Neprolepsis cordatus. It's a fern. <laughs> it's a fern, people. <laughs> Please, I won't give you the scientific names. <laughs> this one is a desert rose and this is the flowers that it will bloom on it. But isn't it cute? It just looks like, it's almost like a mini succulent. It's a little tube plant kind of a thing. Desert roses are beautiful. They get the most amazing flowers yeah, and they're really said. hardy. Yeah, and this one is a, oh, this one's a weird word too, platycerium, whatever that is. But it's got green foliage, foliage and it looks cool. So that's my, that's my gardening expertise, all right? So, but I do know that as we pull them out of the pot, we do have to loosen up the roots a bit. Oh boy, yes, we've done it. We did it. We've uh, pulled the plant out successfully and loosening up the roots so that they don't get root bound in this little box here. It's got a bit of room. Now, obviously these are plants that are destined to grow nice and big, but for this purpose, we're just going to be using them while they're little for our Mother's Day table centerpiece. This one's already busted open, so we've got him all set there. Um, oh, I like that nice tall little plant there. So yes, when they're ready, you can obviously take them out and repot them into a much bigger, much bigger uh, pot or into your garden, something like that. Okay, now just to finish off the lovely look here, we're going to add some stones in the top because that will look lovely for our 
table centrepiece. Well, sending some love to Kimberly, who lost yep. her mum and dad um, a oh. number of years ago and yep. gets a bit sad on Mother's Day. Yeah, so sending you some love and hugs. People. So lots of love to you, Kimberly. Lots of people taking their mum out for dinner on Mother's dinner. Day. Okay, lovely. Good on you. Yeah, what's mum's favourite food? Carolyn's going to her mum's grave um, yep. and is going to put up a hanging plant for her. Oh, that's a beautiful idea. Oh, Stacy suggested it's a good idea to have a mix of sand and soil for succulents when you're planting ah, those. Well, that's a great tip. Thank you so much for that one. So if you're planting succulents, sand and soil. So you just, I guess, kind of mix it together before you put it in the pot, I'm guessing. Well, this one's got a little bit of dry leaves there. My mum would love this for Mother's Day. Yes. Are you going to make her one, Julie? Yes. <laughs> I think I should. Okay, so there's our one here and the other oh making a bit of a mess here um the other thing that i was going to show you today was if you're like me and not a green thumb at all and this is just too much to plant you can find ta-da fake succulents you know that they're everywhere so what i did was i bought a few of these so we could fake it on Mother's Day and still have a beautiful table decor and still have a beautiful little gift for mum to take home. So these fit perfectly in my little box here. So um, yeah, just let me know, what do you prefer? Number one in the comments, number two in the comments, number three, what are we getting so far, Julie? Uh, <coughs> it's very mixed, but Carol's yep. had a, Carol uh, Privet wants to modge podge some family pictures on oh, her planter. That's a great that, idea. That would yes. be so beautiful. These would look great mod podged with, you know, the napkins we did on that other home talk a while back. So that's a great idea. Another little idea, which I don't have time for today, but I can show you on my planter that I did for the blog post, is you can add a little, what do you call this? A draw pull. So if you can see that, I've just added the word mum in here, but you can add a draw pull to the side or the end of your box, or you could add this draw pull, one, two, three, put your herbs in like they were suggested, name your herbs here, name your plants, or something like that. So there's an, another awesome idea, and I hope you've enjoyed our DIY today. Do they have a winner? We're ready for the Home Talk ladies to pick a winner of the Home Talk tote bag. They um, have picked a winner. They have. And it scrolled by and I missed it. Oh, no. Sorry. Quickly scroll back up, Julie. We need to find out who the winner is. <laughs> pressure. Pressure on Julie. There is a um, lot of pressure. But also, people, don't forget to subscribe. And please hit the share button of this video and show other people that might love to have another idea for a planter. It doesn't have to be for Mother's Day. It might be for a gift for a friend. What a great wedding gift or housewarming gift for somebody. Um, put their family name in it. There's so many ideas that you could do using this little simple planter box that will sit on your table so beautifully and um, so we've used a fresco uh, you know rustic weathered look here the stencils here and the geometric shapes which we used created with the painters tape on this box so there's three different ideas that you can take away and all the little additives um, don't forget to tune into home talk again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, North America. Do we? And Julie, I'm so sorry we can't find the winner, but you, you saw that name. I know that you did, scrolling through there. And um, we have chosen the winner and we just can't get to it right now. So they I'm really sorry about that. orchids, I'm fairly sure of it. Yes, we think that the winner- And I think the their name might've been Kathy. <laughs> might've been a Kathy, but we'll scroll back and we will find you and you are the winner. And we thank you so much for watching Home Talks DIY Live. I'm Sharon from iRestore Stuff. Thank you and see you for another Home Talk Live really soon. Bye.